sent it out of Pennsylvania. Well, this happened. Here it is. Hey, I'm I'm actually humanitarian You know, I'm with the team. I can talk to. No, I can talk. I voted for him. I'm sorry. This is a democracy. It absolutely is. Yeah, yeah, but kind of, sort of. Why? Ten thousand people in Gaza have been killed. Half are children. The Pope's calling for a ceasefire. The UN is called for it. I'm just asking you. You're a good guy. I voted for you. I know you're a nice guy. This is important. You need to leave. Here, can I give you a phone? So I asked the senator a question. So I asked him a question. He just assaulted him. He just assaulted him. He just assaulted him. He just assaulted him. He was just talking to him. He assaulted him. Put up the picture for a mask. Let me be very clear. The man asking the question not only had the right to ask the question, in my opinion, it was the right question to ask the senator from Pennsylvania. Senator John Fetterman allegedly walked away from a constituent who posed the question about his stance on the humanitarian ceasefire in the Gaza Strip, as Israel has reportedly started to roll out is ground invasion of the territory. Let's provide proper contextualization to what we have in front of us. While many would like to pose that this is a war between Israel and the Palestinians, there is no Palestinian military force coming into Israel. This is Israel at war with Hamas. Hamas has committed criminal offenses according to Hamas. They have done so. And according to narratives that are counter, so has Israel. But the PR or the spin has been quite different. Regardless of where you fall in that equation, we can debate that until we're blue in the face. Under this democracy, a person has the right to ask a question without being physically assaulted by somebody. And here's the part where I blame Fetterman. And I know some people are going to say Fetterman had nothing to do with it. Uh, damn that. Fetterman is a bold proclaimer of what he believes. It's no way in the hell somebody would be able to do that to another human being who's posing a legitimate question to me. And I'm not even a public figure. This is how democracy works. You cannot be opposed to questions if you seek to serve. There's more. Following the Moss's uh, surprise attack on Israel on October 7th, the Democratic senator stated, quote, he would unequivocally support any necessary military, intelligence, and humanitarian aid to Israel. In a later statement, he reiterated his support for Israel, adding, quote, now is the time to talk, now is not the time to talk about a ceasefire. Fetterman's stance sparked statewide pro-Palestinian protests outside of his four offices with hundreds of demonstrators gathering at Custom House in Philadelphia on Thursday. Keep that statement up because I want to bring your attention to a problem. Newsweek is not the only one. To a problem with the framing of the conversation. You will clearly see that it says that pro-Palestinian protests outside his four offices See, that's called framing, framing the debate. You don't have to necessarily be pro-Palestinian to be pro-humanitarian aid. Please understand this. You can actually be pro-Israel and also pro-cease fire for the sake of humanitarian aid. It's something that has been done commonplace as it relates to war. Uh, the UN, they have a security council. That security council will say, you know, we're going to vote in the affirmative to allow for humanitarian aid to come to those who are innocent and caught in the middle of this very violent situation. And then typically they have a period of time that the ceasefire for humanitarian purposes will remain in place. That's to protect the innocent. That's to protect those 
was simply, as I've said before, waking up in the morning every day, going to work, trying to make money to pay their mortgage, take care of their bills, put food on the table, raise their children. That's what it's for. To oppose humanitarian aid is extreme, in my opinion. Maybe there's a debate about how long, but to say no flat out, well, Senator, I think the man had a right to at least get a response, not to get physically assaulted. Among the many, among the many, who have called on Fetterman to reconsider his position and demand an immediate ceasefire in Gaza was Daniel Kovalik, a 55-year-old former professor of international human rights who shared the video on Twitter, now known as X, in which he confronts the senator about his stance on the israel Hamas war, Hamas war, excuse me. In the video, the professor who taught at the University of Pittsburgh School of Law uh, until his contract ended in June, posed the question to the Democrat, why doesn't, why he doesn't support a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza? Fair question. After an off camera person appeared to attempt to stop the professor from posing such questions. The professor said, quote, I can talk to him. I voted for him. I'm sorry. This is a democracy. And he continued to pose the question. Put up the picture for a man. Okay. Fetterman remained silent. Okay. He listened at that moment, you clearly saw it, to the professor before he can be seen walking away as the professor is physically pushed out of the building. I just need to understand this. Why, why would you let this stand? Newsweek contacted Fetterman's press team and the professor for comment and further information via email on Monday, quote, I just took on John Fetterman for his failure to support a ceasefire for Gaza and was assaulted. Come see the violence inherited in the system, the professor wrote on X. He states in the thread under the video he paid for a ticket to the event and he is considering filing charges against the man who decided to physically assault him. There's more. Uh, in a statement about the conflict, obviously, published by his office. Fetterman said that he won't support a ceasefire until after Hamas is neutralized. It read in part, I grieve for every innocent person. I grieve for every innocent person and brave Israeli soldier killed since Hamas started this war. If not for the horrific attacks by Hamas terrorists, thousands of innocent Israelis and Palestinians would still be alive today. Now is not the time to talk about a ceasefire. We must support Israel in their efforts to eliminate the Hamas terrorists who slaughtered innocent men, women, and children. Hamas does not want peace. They want to destroy Israel. We can talk about a ceasefire after Hamas is neutralized. The lack of humanity is right before us. Right before us. Humanitarian ceasefire for the innocent. So how do we grieve for the innocent? but sign off on the innocent dying. They don't have anything to do with this war. The vast majority of citizens of any country have very little, if anything, to do with international conflict. Typically, they are pawns. They are told they must fight. They must pick up a gun and shoot. The vast majority will not be recruited by their government's military. They will continue to work, pay taxes. It's the system that we have inherited. I'm disappointed in the senator, to say the least. I'm disappointed in his stance. I'm disappointed in the lack of contextualization. I'm disappointed in the lack of humanity. I thought the professor had a good point, a good question, and at least it should have been answered. And I hope he does press charges against whoever decided to physically assault him because of a question. 